Hey guys, this is Rob from Classic Car Living and I'm here with Victor. And this is my 1969 Mach 1 S-Code. So Victor, tell me a little bit about this car. Well, this was a car that I picked up in uh, Indiana almost about 14 years ago now. Um, it was a car that uh, did not have an engine at the time. Um, it was just uh, parked on the side of a Mustang place where they sold parts and cars and stuff like that. And I decided to take it on as a project. Uh, I didn't think there was much to do, but there wasn't that much rust seen from the outside. But as you'll later see from uh, some of the pictures, uh, there was rust all over the place. I took it as a project car. I had a, a Cobra kit car at the time. Uh, my wife and I were really enjoying it. And we decided to get something that we could pack the kids in and go to shows, uh, unlike the Cobra. So we were looking for a four-seater Mustang. And we found this and we thought it would be a nice project car, something that we didn't have to put too much money into um, and get rolling. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I was going to say, uh, not too much money. Uh, talk to me about that. What do you think? So did reality hit? Reality hit. Um, I have the entire project book uh, there uh, with, with me. Um, you can see invoices after invoices after invoices. As we started opening up the car, more and more rust uh, came on site. And it comes to a point that I had to decide whether to keep going or pull back on the, on the entire project. Um, this is not like what you see on the shows. Um, reality is that there's a lot of money, there's a lot of investment into these things, and there's a lot of time that it takes. Tell me, how, how long did this thing take you to completely finish? To completely finish, it took about four years. The car was uh, for almost uh, three years up in North Florida, near Stark, Florida. Uh, everything worked good at the beginning. He would let me go and work on the car, but it came to time the car was just not moving. And it was money and money and the car wasn't moving. So I decided one day to go with my nephew, his truck. Um, we rented a U-Haul, a, a car haul on a U-Haul. We packed everything up and we brought the, the, the car home to South Florida. And that's when a year and a half later, I finished it. So one of, the, one of the important things if you ever think about putting one of these cars together is to build yourself a, a, a book. So I put together a, a book with these pictures. Uh, here you can see the outside of the cow so it doesn't look too bad. But when we opened it up, this is basically what the cow looked like. Um, at the time, I had not seen your video on how to buy a classic car. This is one <laughs> of the things that you mentioned is to pour the water in here and see if it leaks on the inside. So you can see actually how, how bad it was. Mm -hmm. All of that needed to be completely wow. replaced. These were the torque boxes that I, I took, talked to you about. Wow. Um, that was the, the rust there. Um, these were the floor pans. So this was a lesson learned. And for all of those out there who may be doing anything with the floor pans on this Mustang, um, once you go and you have to replace two floor pans, my suggestion is just replace the whole sheet. Um, it's it's going to be better in the long run because you never know. You may have more rust on the floor pans in the back end. That's what I would have done. Uh, this cost me more money and time. I ended up doing three out of the four. Right. So again, it would have been better just to. Um, the whole front end was, was taken uh, uh, apart. Uh, important things about this when you um, start taking panels apart on a Mustang. And um, it is important uh, that you uh, secure your frame because it could very easily bend if, if, if you don't. Because it it's, it's a unibody. It's a right? unibody, correct. So once we started taking the, fr the front end apart, mm -hmm. we make sure that it, was, uh, that it was secured. We got drawings to make sure all the dimensions were correct. Once we were done, I had to procure those uh, through someone who used to work at the Mustang plant and he had the drawing, so I was able to, to, to get that. Um, and then you can see the progression. This was not supposed to be a full restoration, but you can see every single bolt was off this car. Hmm. There you see it on the rotisserie. So it was a matter of taking everything apart and then putting it back together. And as I say, halfway through the project, I almost sold the entire project. Why is that? It was just money, 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 money. And it seemed like it was a never ending uh, 
so, project. So advice to somebody who goes into a project thinking, oh, you know what? It's so whatever you think it's going to cost, double it plus 20%. Okay. Wow. Because at the end of the day, you're doing it yourself. You want to make it right. You want to make it look good. Um, so this is where you go the extra mile. Um, again, I don't regret doing it. Um, I would not do it again. It, it was a great experience. Um, my suggestion is if you're not really into the res restoration, you're not going to do a lot of work yourself, is buy it done already. Save a lot of money and time, yeah. right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so this was a reinforce on the torque bosses. This is when I started coming to, I beat blasted the car. This whole, this is a very interesting, uh, this is the side rear fender. So Ford uh, actually soldered, silver soldered the piece onto the roof line. So we cut that at the production line mm. and we re had to redo both fenders. Mm. Uh, this was Bondo to the max on both sides. So I want it back to, uh, to metal, so that's what needed to be done there. Once the car was all ready to go, we beat blasted it. Okay, and then we started the painting. painting process, which this is one of the more expensive parts of a project that people don't realize. Um, so again, a dynamat, uh, the bottom, this is when I started putting the interior together. Notice how nice the coatings I did on the underneath. Um, what, what is that? Is that the original color? This is, so I did research on the colors underneath, uh, yes. This, I actually did this, this red here is, is basically done with a, a red type primer. It's a red oxide, right? It's a red oxide yeah. primer, correct. Nice. Okay. So all the wiring was, was, was brand new. Uh, this was Mustang Specialties up in Pompano. You asked me about the engine. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, the company that I procured the engine from. It's got hydraulic lifters. Wow. Uh, it's, it's a very clean engine, all rebuilt. Okay, the engine still has maybe 9,000 miles on it. Okay, this is when they were putting it together there at, at the shop. You can see in frame coating, I coated everything inside the frame, make sure I never have any issues again with rust. Mm -hmm. um, all in Leather Corporation, Great South Florida company to do any of your interior work. Um, there's several people from the uh, Mustang Club that use them. Hmm. Um, and this was a final. This was when it was finally done at my first show. I was able to, to show the car. So you can see from this picture as the car is today, the progression that I made. Those were more original style wheels. Right. Uh, through the years, I've changed it to the rally type wheels. Uh, I I added the louvers later on, but still, again, as my what, what I like to do with a car is still keep a little bit of originality to it. Okay, so this is a 390, uh, which is a big block uh, for the S code model, but I did some upgrades to it to make it a nice car to drive every day. So you know, I put a MSD uh, ignition uh, in there. So although it looks like I may have an original alternator setup, um, it is a one wire alternator. So that's another a nice convenience to it. Uh, the, the brakes in the front are Wilwood brakes, so they're all upgraded. I got uh, slotted uh, rotors on there. Uh, the radiator is an aluminum radiator, but still looking like the Original. Uh, original. What interests me most when I was putting the car together is when you start researching um, all of the little items that make a difference between uh, one year and the other. Like for example, something as simple as uh, this latch here on the hood from the 69 to the 70, this little dimple here changes slightly. Just this? Just this right here. It's a little bit more angled. This is more than 90 degrees. So this is so, for purists. So it, yeah, it, it was very interesting to study and, and uh, research things like that. And you know, if you're an MCA person and you're going to these shows, um, you know, they look at they look at stuff like that. Tell me about one thing about this uh, 390s is the space on the uh, the so, space of getting it in there. How do you change the spark plugs on this thing? So you go. To change the spark plugs, this is very uh, complicated. As you can see, you got all these hoses running through here. You can't get your hand in there to change the spark plug hardly, um, especially on the two middle ones. Um, so what you have to do is you have to just crack it 
and then you put a little vacuum hose on the tip of the spark plug and you start turning it with your finger and that's basically the the only way yeah, because um, Ford obviously this is a big block so this is so this is a big block um, and there's uh, once they went to the 428s uh, uh, Cobra jet engines now they really had to modify this and if you see one of those cars you'll see that um, there's a modification here where the strut towers actually bend in what they had to do here they use a reinforcement on the strut towers for this year because with this size engine and the torque of the engine etc uh, the towers were, would actually crack if they didn't have that reinforcement. Is this an AC car or did you add it? So this was, it is an originally an AC car, but to procure all the parts for the original AC uh, makeup, it was going to cost a lot of money and a lot of time. Uh, so I went with a classic uh, air system. Uh, I did an aftermarket AC on, gotcha. on here. Here's another example of the little purist in me. So on the spare tire, uh, even though I have um, the, the Goodrich tires, I did put the Firestone wide oval tire, all the you know original make, uh, makeup of the uh, trunk. What about this little wire here? Is that something original? Uh, this, this, this goes back and forth. I see a, a lot of uh, those with the uh, Mach ones have this uh, sort of like a little aftermarket thing to keep your trunk up. Oh. Instead of using a broomstick, this looks a little nicer. So it's not a that is not an original. No. Oh, okay. So the the weight the weight of the wing here uh, does create some weight on the trunk. So if you don't have it, just tends gotcha. to just slam down. Gotcha. Um, even if you if you look underneath the car, so you could see I I I researched. I put tags. I put markings. So talk to us a little bit about those tags and markings. What are those? So those tags and markings, as you can see the one on the uh, left hand side there, basically it's about the differential on your car. Some of these markings were inspection markings that they used at the time. For factory? For factory, that's correct. So this car is a San Jose car. Uh, it's an early 1969. It was actually uh, built in March of 1969. Um, I researched how the inspection stamps were there. They were different at each of the factories. So in San Jose at that time, they used these um, stamps okay from the in inspector and what, so all these are more of the inspection type of markings that they used to use so I researched this now you could go to another uh, factory for factory plant and they could have used completely different markings like on some you'll see here the paint okay on the side here right so they didn't use this in San Jose at this time Maybe they used it later. So it's all about sometimes you can't just copy something that you see from another car. You yeah. kind of have to do the research of where the, the car was and stuff like that. Uh, some people ask me about why uh, the chrome valve covers. Well, uh, you can see later 1969 uh, Mach 1s, uh, S codes, etc., and they have the blue covers. So why the chrome ones? Well, they were leftover valve covers. Uh, from their 1968 cars that they used in San Jose at that time. Um, I guess just to get rid of them before they went to the blue one. So it's little nuances like this that I really uh, enjoy. A lot of research uh, and probably if I were to look at it, there's uh, more to do. Mustang buddies telling me they couldn't hear me coming. So now good. I got a Magna Flow in here and uh, they don't kid me anymore. So this is an automatic car. Mm -hmm. uh, being an automatic uh, for this year did not come with a tack. You spend more money than you think. But at the end of the day, you got something that you're happy with. Right. Um, and that's and that's important. You know that you put it together the way you wanted it. So yeah, and you know everything in this car. I know every I know everything on this car. Every every tick, rattle, and roll. All right. So we just took a ride in Victor's car. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you, Victor, for having us. Uh, thank you, Rob, for coming out here and uh, shooting this video. Are you going to sell the car now or what? Um, I don't know. I'll take bidders. <laughs> All right. So next time, we'll see you guys. Take care. Thank you.